लेकिन the migration path from 8th to 16th bit to now we are talking about how to move from 16th bit to 32th bit. So as uh, we are talking about that uh, customer always want to know. So it's not a bad thing to support the child for. So now the customer wants increased performance, better graphics, Wi-Fi connectivity, better display and of course real-time clock. So for increased performance, we have to first identify which microcontroller we selected. So we have to choose PIC32 because of its high performance. It offers 80 megahertz of performance. It's based on uh, MIPS and 4K core. We have licensed that uh, core. And uh, performance is 1.56 DMIPS per megahertz. Quite a high performance uh, code with uh, multiple uh, connectivity options. I will go through this uh, connectivity options in detail. I will talk about uh, serial, I will talk about USB, I will talk about Wi-Fi, Ethernet, everything. I will talk about uh, those in uh, following slides. And uh, with high speed uh, parallel port, uh, we can support big graphics as well. So we will cover that in detail. Okay, so uh, as I said, we now want to add some new cool features to this remote and uh, in the end I'll show you what the end remote will look like. Very high class, high end remote uh, will uh, make use of Victor 2. So uh, we'll have a Wi-Fi wireless, high end uh, graphical display, USB for programming the remote, more touch keys, okay. Uh, accurate timekeeping. Uh, I'll show you uh, the RTCC options that Microcheck offers. There are three kind of options. I'll go through them. Uh, and more memory, more I/O, more performance. First of all, we have to select the MCU. So MCU, as I talk, uh, talked about, it's going to be PIC32. Brief overview of PIC32. How many of you are using PIC32 already? Okay. Well, keep asking you questions in between. Uh, okay, so it was introduced in uh, year 2007 and uh, now we have uh, seven families, MX1, MX2, MX3, MX4, up to MX7. And we have recently introduced MX1 and MX2. I'll go through the feature set uh, of uh, each of these uh, families. And uh, as with 8-bit and 16-bit, software stack is available free of cost. Go download and use your uh, controller. And it's, uh, we'll see that it's very easy to migrate from 16 to 32. Can I ask you a question? Yes, please. How would you compare yourself with a ARM Cortex M3 or M5? I'll show you in the following slide. Just wait for a couple of slides. I'll show you that benchmarking the uh, slide in which I have for the comparison. Okay, so uh, here are the main uh, key features of uh, PIC32. As I said, it's uh, based on M4K hardware architecture, uh, single cycle hardware plan, very fast interrupted complex switching. Uh, then we have uh, DMA with integrated CRC, which operates in idle mode. Uh, just go through this, we have uh, DLC on the go, which can be configured as both or on the go or both. Again, I will cover this in detail. I am going to cover this in detail, cache. I am going to cover this in detail. Then we have a 16 bit parallel master port, high speed. It's very useful for connecting high end graphics because graphics run through PMD port. So I'll show you uh, some specific development board that uses uh, this technique for uh, connecting your graphics board and then running the application. Uh, okay, as uh, similar with 8 bit and 16 bit, it's a single uh, 2.6 volt uh, supply. The power on reset, power on reset, and over this. This is same. Again, this is same compatible with the, the tool set, the debugger, everything remains same. I'm going to show you, I'm going to demonstrate at the end of this uh, uh, slide set how easy it is to migrate from 16 bit to 32. A uh, couple of demos uh, one is base, again, potentiometer, and another one is Wi Fi. Uh, Few important things to note here is uh, we have uh, recently added uh, I2S 
and CDM duty. Here I'll talk about this uh, in detail in the following slides. Okay, this is the slide I was talking about. So this is uh, the benchmark. Who can tell me what is code map? Software guys. Korma? It's a global benchmark. Global benchmark. Okay, you are close. It's, it's a global, uh, it's an independent body uh, managed by uh, uh, EMBC, uh, uh, Microsoft Performance uh, Consortium. So, uh, so, okay, so uh, this basically uh, the number uh, denotes the performance of any microprocessor or microcontroller. Higher the number means better or faster. And this is an independent body. You can go to their website and check out which is faster, which is slow. The whole comparison is taken from their website. It's not something that we have done. And you can see that the clarity stands out at 80 megahertz much faster than computer S120 megahertz. You can find this uh, information with computer S. I'm sure you can guess it. But uh, all the details are there on uh, this side. You can easily see that uh, you know, it's outperforming. Pick a review with which M4K at 80 megahertz is outperforming. It's better than better by 20 percent than code. This is all the uh, all our M3 Cortex M3. Yes, all are protected. Does that answer your question? No, there are other websites which says other things. Oh, is it? Yeah, it does. Anyway. We can uh, share that thing uh, later on. <coughs> and, uh, okay, this is the pick carry to uh, product profile. So, uh, this is something very recent, MX1 and MX2. And even out of this, 128 and 64 which are going to be released very soon. I guess uh, it's going to be launched uh, next month or so. And this was launched recently. This is with, uh, this is general purpose, basic, low pin, low memory, 32 bit device. With CDM. If you want USB, go to MX2. The book price for this device is just over one dollar. So, a 32 bit device with CDMU, USB, just over one dollar. And in high volumes, maybe just below one dollar. Okay, then uh, I'm sure you are aware of uh, MX3, MX4, looking general purpose high memory. With USB. Then we have the connectivity series with uh, USB and CAN, USB and Ethernet, USB plus 2 CAN and Ethernet. This is the highest series and this is what is plugged into this development board, the highest one on this board. And the package option you can see starting from uh, 36, then TLA to 128, 121 PGA. The size you can see it's uh, 10 by 10. <coughs> 10 pin 50 square piece 14 cross 14. Create small. And we have other packages as well. You can just uh, go through the website or the product selection guide. And uh, Okay, any question? Okay, so one of the requirements of this high-end remote is better display, high-end display. So we'll see options available with Picture 2 to integrate high-end graphics. So this is one traditional approach. You have Picture 2, you have the graphics controller and then you use your graphical display. You use the PMD, graphic controller and then you display. So you can uh, use up to WPGA, that is business cross uh, 430 resolution, using this approach. I'll show you some development boards that, uh, that are using a Epson controller, Epson graphical, graphics controller, and implementing a WPGA. It's a 7 inch screen. 
Okay, and uh, this is another port, uh, very user friendly. Uh, I'll say it's, it's quite cheap uh, because of the functionality that it offers. This is known as multimedia extension port. So combined with the connectivity options, with the user interface, with the memory, we have this MEV board with UVGA touch screen, a joystick, pigtail expansion powder so that you can connect pigtail boards to it. You can connect the, uh, I'm not sure if you are aware of M2M module machine to machine where one uh, board talks to another board. So you can you know, really have a, uh, a real time GPS, something like this on this. We have, we already have a Google Maps ported onto pigtail. So in real time you can see where are you. Small GPS module using the end to end module. Then it has got uh, integrated Wi Fi module over here. So I have this module uh, on this table. You can actually see it uh, later. And I am also going to uh, demonstrate at the end of this slide set how it works. Then it has a uh, graphics controller, micro SD card, accelerometer, flash, and uh, 24 bit audio coding. So, basic requirement like if you just want to develop. Let's say MP3, you want to see some uh, videos or uh, JPEG images with audio. This is the tool for you. You can connect any picture into starter kit. How many of you are aware of uh, starter kits offered by Microchip? Okay, good number. And uh, I'll show you uh, what all we offer. General purpose USB, Ethernet for USB, and uh, DSP digital. This was introduced recently. This contains a DSP 3 EP series of processor, which is a 70 MIPS processor, 16 bit, 70 MIPS processor. So this can also be used with and maybe both. So all, all these uh, starter kits, as you know, that has got integrated programmer and debugger. So no need to buy another uh, debugger just for this. So you plug this here and you have a complete development platform made. Okay, so uh, we talked about graphics with graphics controller. Now since Pictet 2 offers raw power of 80 megahertz, 1.56 uh, uh, DMIPS per megahertz, so why not try to drive the graphics directly from Pictet 2? So we have that uh, approach implemented, we have the application mode, we have the uh, uh, development board. So using picture review, you can directly drive the graphic, no need of any graphics control and between. This will reduce your bomb cost drastically. And uh, with this approach, you can easily drive 16 dB WPVGA. I'll uh, show you uh, the development board associated with this approach. Okay, so as I said, uh, it's because of the high MIPS of picture review, we are able to achieve controlless graphics application. To achieve, it's a technique like uh, you have to throw the data via PMP using DMA. So that consumes just 5 MIPS, just less than 5 MIPS and rest. 75 MIPS you can utilize using, you can use either USB or you can run any stack. But again, as I said, the limitation is you can only display 65K. That's good enough for that cost. Okay, so this is the low cost controller as traffic. Can you just go back to the previous slide? Yes. Just to the previous slide. The 65k and what is it? What would be the refresh rate for this? Uh, refresh rate. I mean, let's say if you have a moving uh, graph or it's something. Uh, it's is static. Four, yeah. It's, it's, uh, so the refresh very rate low. It's very low. It's four frames per second. Yeah, yes. the refresh rate will not be that high. So you, you you cannot stream the live video of that. So I'm talking about a generally moving graph or something. 
So I think you know uh, with the available RAM, what we have, and if you go for the let's say external RAM, then probably the refresh rate would be at 80 no, no, megahertz. Controller, the controller less approach. I mean, what would be the refresh rate that you're talking about? Let me just refer the data and I can give you the number, I guess approximate it's number. It's poor ideas if I remember correctly. You can correct me if you have But again, uh, depends on the resolution. If the resolution is low, it will be faster. But uh, of course, uh, this is the limitation. You can also display WPGA using this approach, but the refresh rate will be very, very low. Because it's using 16 bit PMD. So that is why we are you know, limiting it just 16 dB. Okay, so this is uh, the LCCG uh, port that we offer in the department. And uh, it has got uh, external on chip RAM 256K. And uh, using uh, which you can, you have to use this, use this if you want to you know, drive a big UVGA 16 dB. But if you don't want this, then take the record with the internal memory itself can drive up to 8 dB to which it is. So if you have in your system take the to controller, you want to drive graphics without any external memory, you can go up to 8 dB. But the requirement from customer side is higher remote, better graphics, 24 dB maybe. So we will use external controller. I'll show you uh, uh, a demonstration video also. So this is uh, the sum of uh, the development boards that we have. This is the low cost uh, uh, controller list. And this is with the uh, external controller. Both have the Epson uh, graphics controller. And these are the displays that you, know, uh, you can use microchip. Of course you can implement your own display. You can buy the glass and use it on your own board. These are just supporting tools. Any questions so far? <coughs> okay. So, uh, Harsha has already talked about uh, this uh, graphics library and GDD. Right? Can anyone explain what is graphics library? How, how can you use uh, GDD to implement your touch buttons? Any experienced one here? Has anyone used this GDD to? No? Okay. Again, uh, these are quite attractive. It's free of cost. It's a uh, plugin to MPLAB. Just download it, plug into your uh, MPLAB, and you can uh, design something like this. You just have to pull it from the library, place it, and you have the code ready for that. You don't have to write anything. Drag and drop buttons. As simple as that. Okay, I'll show you a quick uh, graphics video. This is uh, using Epson controller and driving 7 inch screen. This is a quick video to show you some of the features of the microchip graphics library by using the Epson graphics demo. The graphics controller plus Epson S1D13517 board has many features including resolution support up to 960 by 960, 24-bit color, expandable memory for multiple frames, alpha blending, transparency, and picture-in-picture -picture for animation or scrolling. Larger LCD panels are also available to work with the Epson graphics board. The two seen here are the 7-inch 800 by 480 WVGA and the 5.7-inch 640 by 480 VGA graphics boards. The WVGA board is seen in this video running the Epson demo. The demo starts with an analog clock displaying a time. You will also notice buttons with a gradient effect to them that are also somewhat transparent. The panel slides in and out when a button is pressed. The background layer can be changed by going to the config screen along with other features of the demo, including the backlight levels. From the performance screen, the user can see gradients being drawn dynamically. They can also see how elbow blending can be used for a simple fading effect. When the user hits the slideshow button, the screen will slide up, down, left, right. It is set up to run slow so that the user can see how clean of a scroll it is. 
Scrolling is done by using the picture-in-picture -picture feature of the Epstein controller. Its speed can be changed to meet application needs. This demo comes packed with sample screens to get your application started fast. In the panel demo section, you will find various samples for thermostats, home lighting applications, security panels, and even energy meters. There are many layers and elbow blending effects going on if you look closely. The Epson demo was easily made using Microchip's free graphics library. The library supplies all the widgets and functions seen in this demo and more. For more information, visit www.microchip.com graphics. Thank you.